In 1972, countries around the world were crippled by crises. The troubles flared in Northern Ireland. Military helicopters ferried the guerrillas and their hostages to a Terror took center stage at the Munich Olympics. War-weary troops soldiered on in Vietnam. Tensions between the East and West called for deft diplomacy. Two men, President Richard Nixon and National Security Affairs Assistant Henry Kissinger, set an ambitious agenda. At the end of 72, we thought we had the international situation in as favorable a shape for the United States as it had been for a long time. Together, these men forged a U.S. foreign policy that would change the world. And for that reason, they were named Time Magazine's Men of the Year. When you and the President were named uh, Men of the Year, did that change anything? And did that... No, did no, that for me it was a nightmare. I was a presidential assistant. To be given equal treatment with the President of the United States was, for me, almost suicidal. And I begged the editor-in-chief at the time to not make me co-man of the year. And I called him uh, several times, and finally he said, if you call me once more, we make you the sole man <laughs> of the year. It, it was, of course, a great privilege, even though I would have preferred not to be mm -hmm. named. Now, my understanding is that the president himself was not particularly pleased to be sharing the honor with anyone else. I don't know whether he was. He, he never said it to me which was the most dangerous aspect of it. So as you think back to the incredible events of 1972, do you remember that as an era of triumph more or of trial? It really was both. We thought the war in Vietnam had been ended. We had made progress with established adversaries. A visit to Beijing, a visit to Moscow. We achieved our major foreign policy objectives but it was done under very painful circumstances. The country was very divided over the Vietnam War. So then Watergate blew up, and so the hopes of late 72 couldn't be realized. As you, as you look back on, on that year, the sort of rapid development that uh, has come to China and that took off really in the era of Deng Xiaoping. Could you have imagined that back in 1972? No. Nixon came in February 72. China was still a very underdeveloped country at the time. We had to bring all the technology for the communications of the president. There were no skyscrapers, of course. There were no traffic jams because there were no cars. Uh, the hotel in which we stayed in Shanghai it was like a Howard Johnson. If anyone had thought 30 years later there would be reflections about when China would catch America, or maybe even surpass it, that would have seemed fantastic. While Dr. Kissinger might not have predicted China's growth, we did ask him if he had any predictions for this year about who time should name as its person of the year. I think there's only one candidate this year, and that's Obama. His achievement isn't that he won the election. His achievement is that he got the nomination and that he became not the spokesman of a party, but the spokesman of what may uh, turn out to be a new approach to domestic politics. This could be the beginning of a creative period such as we had at the end of the Second World War. The art of leadership is to operate at the outer limit of what a society can achieve. I'm very hopeful and uh, very positive about the prospects before us. And now I have to leave you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time.